uh, and started machine translation of some kind to reduce expenses. And again, in uh, Umit Bey's uh, presentation, we understood really if even a small 10% or 20% means a lot because the revenues are uh, big. Actually, and here too in the Taos 2017 summit report, we see that in uh, 2010, uh, we have machine translation and advanced leveraging here as technology. It's from translation memory tools to workflow to further to machine translation. And of course, communication-wise, the social media is extremely important because we at the same time had uh, crowdsourcing and all kinds of other things going on, perhaps not uh, uh, not uh, paying quality-wise, but still, if need be for that, if demand be in that direction, then why not? Things changed, really, in the years that we lived. Okay, then, uh, then what can we say about translation industry after 1990? Uh, widespread use of the internet, although we did not mention that, definitely internet is responsible for coming into being of localization. We would have localization in the Silicon Valley with some companies, but not to this extent. As we know, the, uh, the software uh, developing uh, companies produce whatever they do, and they have some, at least, have uh, 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 software translated into say 125 uh, languages. They do the translations at the same time, uh, simultaneously with the production phase, and they sim ship it throughout the world the same day. This is very important, and this definitely happened was the integration of the internet. Uh, translation memory software, terminology software, project management software were of common use for those localization companies at least, and for multi-language vendors definitely. Multilingual translation projects were actually the practice. Large volume of translation projects were being done. Grammar and spell check tools, term banks, electronic glossaries, voice recognition software, speech-to-text software, etc and globalization, internationalization, project management, multi-language vendors, and source language vendors. It's that kind of a scene that actually we are in at the moment. And the effect of these changes in translation industry led to deconstruction of traditional fixed structures, because we are moving from the fixed to the flexible and further to asynchronous, actually. Deconstruction of hierarchical structures, introduction of new concepts and use in operations, a complete facelift, that is to say, in translation industry. Uh, okay, now let's take a look at some statistics. Uh, this is not the uh, Taos 2017 statistics. I also have statistics from Taos. Uh, 